Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and where we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And in today's episode, the topic is, are the Clippers low-key the best team in the West so far? So that's the topic I want to get into in today's video. But before we get into that, I want you guys to please make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell to be notified when we drop our content. Also, be sure to check out our Dreamers Pro podcast, which is linked in the description below. Also, be on the lookout for our Dreamers Pro premium platform that we're launching next week. And uh, also, be on the lookout for DreamersPro.com that we're also going to be launching um, in the first in, the, in January. Also, want to wish you guys a, a happy, what is it, happy New Year's Eve. It all depends on this, on, this, on when you see this video. And also, happy New Year's. You know, uh, finally welcome you guys into 2021. Again, it all depends on when you guys see this video. We're, we're, we're shooting this video on the last day of 2020. I hope you guys uh, made it through this year. And all of you guys are safe and sound, and hopefully we can go into this new year strong, uh, stronger and better. So happy, happy new year, and I'm wishing you guys the very best uh, this this coming year. So anyway, let me get into this topic right here. Now today, my theme is, Marco said it, we want to go out with a bang. I want to go out with a bang with these topics, and I want to get every single thought off my mind. I'm going to offend some people, make some people happy, but it doesn't matter because it's the last day of the year, and I don't want to go into the new year with any thoughts on my mind like oh should i should we have done that video should we have done this or whatever so we want to finish out the year very very strong so i figured that th these these are some of the things that i want to get off my chest so anyway let me get into the topic here so this is something i've been thinking about uh for the past few days now right but we were all kind of waiting to see how this team would start off the season given how they ended uh their season last their their, their postseason run by blowing a 3-1 lead but so far this season, the Clippers have had some pretty interesting tests. The first week of the season, they started off playing two very good teams. They played the defending champion. They were supposed to play the defending champions in the Los Angeles Lakers. And they were also supposed to play the team that knocked them out of the playoffs last time we saw these two teams, excuse me, competing against each other. Opening night, they went out there, they handled their business, they beat the Lakers pretty decisively. It wasn't a beatdown or anything, but they beat them. Then two days later, they went out there and beat the team that really beat them up, which was the Denver Nuggets. And they, pretty, they beat them pretty handily, right? But then a few games later, they went out there and they got embarrassed by that 51, 50 point blowout. And as most people would do, there was a huge overreaction. And all of a sudden, people were psychoanalyzing the Clippers on TV where they really bad. They hadn't learned. You know, people were going off, right? But this is just the media doing their thing. I, I think they just overreacted. And then they came back and then they beat the T-Wolves, right? But the T-Wolves, it's nothing to, it's nothing to, you know, wring your, hand, wring your hands about and start clapping and say, oh my God, they beat the T-Wolves. Although this has been a pretty funky season so far. And the T-Wolves right now, if I look at the Western Conference standings, the, the Timberwolves, I believe, are in the, are, are in the playoffs. They're the number eight seed. So go figure. So they beat the T-Wolves, right? Which no one is going to celebrate. But then yesterday, they went out and beat the team, the Portland Trailblazers. They just beat the Lakers. Now, why is that win important? Because they so far have beaten three playoff teams. They did lose to the Dallas Mavericks, which is inexcusable. But I believe if they played them again, they would have a good chance to beat them. Nevertheless, I'm going off of actually what's happened, right? They've beaten these three teams. And of course, you all remember the back and forth with the Damian Lillard and Paul George. And Patrick Beverly last year, you know, one to three Cancun, and it, it, it kind of get go, go, crossing the line and getting a little bit personal when they started talking about people's families, which I completely uh, disagree with, and I think it's just not tasteful. So they beat them. They beat that team yesterday pretty easily, and they got Kawhi Leonard back. And as I said before, when he plays, it's just a different team, right? And I'm going to get to Kawhi later, a little bit later in some other videos that we're doing. But when he plays, it's just a different team, man. I mean, they have a completely different complexion. And he gives them a different kind of, you know, vibe and all of these guys. The guys seem more settled down and they seem more calm. So they went out there and beat these teams. And the next team they're going to play, I believe it is today, is going to be the Utah Jazz, who, again, was another playoff um, the, the, uh, playoff team. Now, the Western Conference hasn't been as strong as one would expect. So far, if we're looking at the top four seeds, it's the Clippers are number one. They have the number one record in the West, followed by the Denver Nuggets, the Kings, uh, the Jazz, and the Lakers. Now, the Utah Jazz, 
excuse me, the Denver Nuggets finally got their first win yesterday. So they're one and three. The Mavs are one and three. The Trailblazers are two and two. And the Houston Rockets are oh and, oh, 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 and two. Now, I'm not saying that this is going to be how this, this is, this is, this is going to be how the, um, the standings are going to shake out for the rest of the season. Obviously, game, teams have only played five games, probably maximum, right? And there are going to be more games to be played. What I'm looking at is kind of like my own early season rankings because ESPN released a power ranking, I think like two days ago, and they had the Clippers the number four team, no, the number four team in the league as a power in the power ranking. So if they were able to kind of make a quick snap shot judgment, then I'm making my own here. And so far, I think the Clippers have actually been the best team in the Western Conference so far. Now, obviously, we've seen a lot of sloppy play. A lot of teams have been getting blown out inexplicably. If we go to the Eastern Conference, it's even funkier in the Eastern Conference, believe it or not. The teams that are leading the Eastern Conference, believe it or not, the number one seed in the East is the Orlando Magic. And they're the only team in the in the league that is undefeated with 4-0. Then the number two seed is the Cleveland Cavaliers. Then it's the Pacers. And then you have Pacers, which is which is most likely going to be a playoff team. Then you have the Sixers. Then you have the Hawks. Then you have the Nets who are number six at three and two. And then you have the Celtics, Hornets, and the Heat are uh, two and two. Now obviously it's still too early to draw conclusions right but these teams that they beat i'm talking i'm referring to the clippers now are legitimate playoff teams i mean they played the the portland Trailblazers, they lost to the, the dallas mavericks but they beat the lakers and they beat the utah uh, they beat the um the denver nuggets and now they're going to be playing against utah and let's see if they can beat them maybe some teams are coming out a little bit slow out of the blocks but nevertheless you can't discount the win right if we're going to do player of the month which the nba does i don't think they're going to discount and say well eh, let's not give out the award this month because the season's too early they're still going to give it out but thus far i think i think i think they've been the best team in the west now to me they're a smarter team because of the additions of sergi baka and nicholas batum this is a smarter team. Like, there, there's no two ways to slice it. The team got smarter with Nicholas Batum, especially Nic Nicholas Batum and his playmaking, Luke Kennard. Serge Ibaka is just a better... I mean, we can say what we want to say, but Serge Ibaka is a better player for the Clippers than Montrezl Harrell. I don't even think it's close at this point. I don't think anyone objectively would say that Montrez was a better fit for the Clippers than Serge. Serge does everything Montrez does, although Montrez scores at a higher rate, but he does everything and more, right? He can pick and roll, which Montrez does. He can pick and pop, which Montrez could not do. He can hit the three, step out and hit the three, as you guys have been seeing, if any of you guys have been paying attention to some of these games. And he's a better rim defender. He's a better rim, uh, rim protector, period, end of story. So he's a better player overall for the Clippers. I'm not saying he's a better person than Montrez or anything like this, but he's a better he 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 he's a better replacement. Nicholas Batum has just been a gem. I don't think I need to explain that further. And so far, they haven't even been playing with one of their best players in Marcus Moore Sr., who hasn't even played, who shot 40% from the field from the three last season, who was one of their best perimeter defenders, best two-way players, and he hasn't even bounced the ball yet this season. I also think that the Clippers have a better coach than Tyron Lue, at least for this team. There's no arguing this. Tyron Lue seems to be so far a better coach for this team, right? For the simple fact that he decided to implement a more fluid offense and then actually go out there and execute on that and get players to really buy in and do that, the team camaraderie is much better. You can see it. They're, 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 they seem to have a healthier locker room from all reports and what I'm seeing um, with them. Paul George has been clicking. Paul George and Kawhi Leonard have been, have, have been clicking. They're both averaging 20 plus points, uh, 22 plus points uh, per game. And they haven't really gotten into their stride. Paul George is, I mean, come on. What can you say about the guy? The guy is a very lethal player, right? Um, some people may point out to the game that you get blown out. That's some people. If you want to look at the, the glass half empty, that's really on you. I'm not going to sit here and argue with you. Um, if you want to focus on that, that's, that's, that's uh, quite frankly, uh, that's your business. But to me, I think they've been the best team in the Western Conference. And their record says so. Now, it's still early. It's very early, without a doubt. And things are most likely going to change. I absolutely believe that. But the question is, do they have what it takes to be the best team in the Western Conference? Absolutely. Because no matter what you may think, the Clippers got better. Forget about the whole Rajon Rondo point. The Clippers got better. Like, let's just face it. They got better. With the addition of Serge and Nicholas Batum and these guys, they're just a better team. Their team chemistry is better and they have a better coach. So the Clippers are not the Clippers of last season. They are a better, they are a much better team, I believe. So... And that's why I have them winning the title this year. Now, some people say, oh, this is an overreaction and this and this and this. I really don't care. Really, honestly, if that's what you feel, that's what you feel. That's you're entitled to your opinion. But for so far, 
I think the Clippers have been the best team in the Western Conference, and I think they have a legitimate shot. If they continue to play well, stay healthy, and keep their team chemistry, keep building, I think they have a chance to finish with the number one uh, seed in the Western Conference, and I'm going to get to some other topics that I have in some other videos. So what I want to know from you guys is, what do you guys think? Do you agree with me? Do you think they're the best team in the West? Do you think it's another team? Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. Again, if you enjoyed the video, please make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we drop our content. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out the next video that we have linked uh, coming up next. Once again, this is Charles here from Dreamers Pro. Wishing you guys an amazing day. Catch you guys on the next episode. Peace.